Well, thank you very much. And it's rather good to have a Greek audience, as some of you may be aware. I've had a fair bit of internet traffic and email traffic with a variety of Greek people over the last few months, not to say business organizations and trade unions as well, because I have expressed, uh, I think, some considerable concern about what's being done to Greece. Uh, and I frankly think what's being done to Greece is humiliating, uh, disgusting, and plain wrong. So I'm particularly pleased uh, to meet the youth wing of Laos, who gave me an award last year, so thank you very much indeed for that, um, and to come and present this initiative. And I do agree that uh, we do need a Europe in which we cooperate together and work together, and therefore it is absolutely logical uh, that young people in Europe should want to try and do the same thing. But I think we need to think a little bit further about what is Europe? What is the European Union? Um, what has it become? And what do we want it to be? And we must remember the origins of this project. You know, two utterly ruinous and disastrous world wars, which you as Greeks know all about. 1914 to 18, 1939 to 45, tens of millions of people killed, uh, some of the worst atrocities that have ever been committed in the name of mankind. And the French in particular, um, feeling that as the Germans invaded them in 1870, again in 1914, and again in 1940, uh, something had to be done to try and stop these dreadful things from happening. The analysis was that it was the creation of nation-states that caused wars, and that what must be done through a project um, of friendship and political integration was effectively the abolition of nation-states and the creation of a new European identity. And, and, and those behind the project thought that would guarantee peace forever. Now, there are one or two difficulties with this concept. Uh, whilst it's well-intentioned, we should remind ourselves that communism was well-intentioned. I mean, the ideas behind Marx and behind communism were to make the world a better, happier place. It turned into a catastrophe and a disaster, and indeed the Soviet Union finished up killing 40 million of its own citizens. The difficulty with this European project is that it was sold to all of us as being about trade, being about friendship, and being about cooperation. The small print in the Treaty of Rome, uh, which has become much larger print, as we've gone through treaties of Nice, Amsterdam, Maastricht. What people have never really understood is that behind all of this was, was, the, was, was the deliberate attempt to create a new state that would effectively supplant and replace our own states. Now, this has all come to a head because of the Euro crisis. And I believe uh, that it's a matter of great regret uh, that many countries such as Greece join the euro in the first place. And what no, one, what no one ever talks about is one of the reasons that Greece's public finances and Greece's public sector are in the state they're in, is that you had seven years in the euro, the first, your first seven years in the euro, where your interest rates were several percentage points lower than they would have been. And it led to this sort of artificial boom. It's rather like being at a party and your glass keeps being topped up all the time and you wake up the next morning with a headache because you haven't quite realised how much you've had. So Greece suffered grievously during that period without realising it because if money is too cheap, um, it creates all sorts of problems. But you're now in this position where, as a result of the bailouts and as a result of the conditions that are being imposed upon you, I think two things are happening. The first is that in democratic terms, the country that actually invented democracy, which is you guys, um, have now, and you should be very proud of that too, um, the country that invented democracy uh, now finds itself, I'm afraid, reduced to a state where uh, your Prime Minister, Papandreou, was effectively removed and replaced uh, by a place man. Um, and where the Troika arrive in Athens and tell your current government what they may or may not do. That is, frankly, in democratic terms, humiliating. And so it is no wonder that people take to the streets. And I've said myself, if I was a Greek citizen, I would take to the streets. Because the whole point about democracy and the reason democracy works is that it acts as a safety valve. Even if you hate the government of the day, you resolve at the next election to get rid of them. 
and to replace them with somebody else. Um, and it's why democracy is so precious and so important. But if that right, if people feel that right has been removed from them because the power has gone somewhere else, then I'm afraid all they're left with is civil disobedience. So that, that worries me too. But the economics of Greece's current predicament worry me almost as much. If we think back to previous recessions, if one thinks of the 1930s, you know, buddy, can you spare a dime um, in America? And in England, we had the Jarrow marches where unemployed men marched from the north of England to Parliament to say, please, we must have work or we can't feed our children. You know, if I look back at the, the Britain's worst ever economic period, our economy contracted by 10% from the beginning of the crisis to the end of the crisis. The Greek economy has contracted by just over 15% in the last five years. The worst news is, if we look at the fourth quarter of 2011, we see that rate of decline has now accelerated to, a, to, to an annualised rate of 7%. So by the end of this year, the Greek economy will have contracted from top to bottom, from 2008 to the end of 2012, by something like 25%. This is impossible. This is completely and utterly impossible. You know, you already have 50% youth unemployment. Uh, one in four private businesses has gone bust. And the medicine that you're being made to take is more austerity. So you're in a deflationary spiral and you're being told to take yet more punishment. And this is happening because Merkel and Sarkozy and the others are desperate to preserve the euro and to preserve the European project. So you're to be sacrificed. You don't matter. Greece doesn't matter. The people of Greece don't matter a damn compared with the well-being of the euro project. And I, and I, and I, and I think, frankly, um, uh, what, you, what you have been made to sign up to um, is going to destroy you completely economically. I, I, I think it is as grim as that. Now, the question is, what are the alternatives? And alternatives are very, very difficult. I remember when Argentina was pegged against the dollar, um, she found herself in a, in a really impossible position. But the day before, in 2001, the Argentinians broke the peg with the dollar, something like 80% of Argentinians wanted to keep the peg and didn't want devaluation. And the situation in Greece today is the same, that most people in Greece want to stick with the euro and not go back to the drachma. And the reason is that if you go back to the drachma overnight, your money is going to be worth 60% less overseas than it currently is. And that is a very bitter and a very unpleasant pill to swallow. But I think it is something that you are going to have to have a debate about. Because these people here are not going to change the rules. These people here are not going to give in on their, on their austerity packages. They're not going to give in <coughs> with their continual frankly, humiliation of your country. And I think you need to have a really big, proper debate um, about how you take the, the pain of devaluation. And it will be very, very painful. There's, there's no easy way out of this for Greece. You, know, you, 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 are, you are stuck in a bad place. But I do think history shows that when countries do take the pain, and one thinks of Argentina in 2001, one thinks of Iceland in 2008, do you know the Icelandic currency fell 80% after their banks went bust? Interest rates were at 21%. I mean, it looked like, not just the volcanic eruptions that year, but it looked like Iceland was finished. And yet, as we go into 2012, the Icelandic economy is due to grow this year at 3%. Argentina has done wonderfully well since she broke the peg. So it isn't for me to tell you what you should and shouldn't do, uh, but, 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 but my serious advice to you is, that, and, and, and goodness me, the youth wing uh, can play a very valuable role in this, there needs to be a proper intellectual and economic debate that goes on in Greece and amongst your friends um, around Europe. And you have got friends around Europe, and I would like to think that we, as the United Kingdom, have always been good friends with Greece. But you've got to consider swallowing this very, very bitter, difficult pill. I personally think it is the only way that you're going to get growth back into the Greek economy. Um, and I think, you know, a two-thirds devaluation, your tourist industry will boom uh, within a fortnight. Um, your export markets, you know, whether it's uh, your olive oil or whatever it may be, uh, will suddenly become incredibly competitive. Um, and, and, and I think at some point, 
in the next year or two, uh, that is what you're going to have to face up to. I, for my part, uh, will encourage this initiative, and you have my assurance on that. Um, I, for my part, will continue uh, to speak up for the very principle of democracy that you invented, um, and I, for my part, will continue uh, through my position in the European Parliament uh, to point out uh, that humiliating people uh, can only lead uh, unfortunately, to violence and unpleasantness. So I will continue to speak up for you, uh, but I do say to you, you're going to have to have a very tough and very difficult debate over the next year or two. Thank you very much.